Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So kita proceed with uh, topic 4 Which is um, I don't think this is topic 4 sorry Topic 3 which is Elasticity uh, Elasticity of demand and Elasticity of supply Okay so before our PKP Kita Dah go for the definition right So kita Recall sedikit lah Uh we have two types of elasticity which is elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply okay for elasticity of demand kita ada tiga jenis uh, price elasticity of demand we would like to see the relationship between price and the quantity demanded second one is income elasticity of demand relationship between income and the quantity demanded and the last one is cross elasticity of demand it's not the relationship between cross and quantity demanded but it means that the two two different types of good the relationship between price of good A with the quantity demand of good B uh, so it does a bit cross eh? ok hopefully you stay again and then kita pakai short form dia untuk uh, uh, price elasticity of demand is ED Income elasticity of demand is EY Sebab income in the economy Represented by Y D is for demand While cross elasticity Cross can X Okay While uh, for elasticity of supply Ada satu sahaja Which is price elasticity of supply So we would like to see the relationship between price And also the quantity supply So I already mentioned it to you before Okay, let's take go when the price changes how will it affect the quantity demanded for this one when the income changes how will it affect the quantity demanded for the cross when the price of good a changes how will it affect the quantity demand of good b two types of good here okay and while for price elasticity of supply when the price of the product changes how will it affect the quantity supply of the product Okay, and then we go for the definition. Like I told you before, uh, as long as you know what definition, meaning that you can define all. Okay, it's enough for you to memorize only one definition. So, the definition is the responsiveness. Make sure you don't forget these words. The responsiveness of the change. Okay, change is very important because if we don't have change, then elasticity won't be there. Okay, because of the change, then that's why we have elasticity. Change in what? Change in quantity demanded due to the change in price. Uh, when the price changes, how will it affect the quantity demanded? Uh, so, this is the definition for ED. So, if you want to define EY, okay, the response EY is income, right? Income elasticity of demand. So, the responsiveness of the change in Still, we are talking about quantity demand because demand is still here. Cuma kita ubah kat sini jadi income. And due to the change in income. So, kat sini yang berubah. Price jadi income. Kalau kita nak buat price elasticity of supply. Okay. The definition, the responsiveness of the change in quantity supply. Uh, kita nak tengok perubahan quantity supply. Tapi kat depan, still price kan? Due to the change in price. Kalau kita nak buat cross pula, the responsiveness of the change in quantity demand, but you must mention what types of good there, of good B, due to the change in price of good A. They must say the two types of good there. Okay, hopefully you still memorize this. And then let's go for the, defini uh, the formula. So for the formula, formula for ED is Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 times P1, P2 minus P1. Okay, so I already told you, this formula is the opposite here. So, kat sini Q2 minus Q1, kat sini akan jadi P2 minus P1. So, dia terbalik sahaja. So, be that they should have the first quantity and the second quantity. Sebab kita nak tengok changes. So, bila saya kata, saya nak tengok uh, perubahan perbelanjaan saya. Uh, last week, saya belanja RM100. This week, saya belanja RM50. So, nak tengok changes dia, 100 minus 50 So, perubahan dia dalam RM50. Ha. So that is how you find changes Okay 
So here, the, the dot here, dotted here that the price list of demand may ensure the responsiveness of the change in quantity demand of good A when the price of good A changes. Same types of good, eh? Uh, sebab dia bukan cross elasticity, dia ED. Same types of good. Good A, harga good A and quantity demand of good A also. This occur when the price of good itself changes. Okay. So, degree of price less than demand. Altogether, for price less than demand, there are the lima degree. Elastic. Okay. The second one is inelastic. The third one is unitary elastic. The fourth one is perfectly elastic. The uh, fifth one is perfectly inelastic. Okay, kita tengok one by one. Nanti saya tunjuk summary dia. Okay, elastic. The first degree is elastic. Maksud elastic ni, dia very responsive. Quantity demand sangat responsive apabila price berubah. Ada sikit je perubahan harga, quantity demand akan berubah dengan banyak. Uh, for example, harga barang tu naik baru 2 sen. Tapi, the consumer decided not to buy the product. Many, uh, the, uh, the consumer decide to buy another product. Uh, the uh, the coefficient is greater than 1. So, bila you kira nanti, in terms of the calculation, result dia, you akan dapat bigger than 1. Nombor tu, dia satu dan ke atas. Tak apa nanti kita tengok in terms of calculation. Percentage change in price is less than percentage change in quantity demand. Perubahan harga adalah lebih daripada perubahan uh, sorry perubahan harga adalah kurang daripada perubahan kuantiti demand harga dia berubah sedikit sahaja see here perubahan harga kecil sahaja tengok uh, demand curve ke bawah kan downward sloping ok you need to draw the demand curve downward sloping like this ok tapi dia mesti downward sloping yang uh, steep almost mendata maksud saya kalau saya adjust kat sini ni Dia macam gini lah. Dia almost mendata. Almost nak jadi horizontal line. Horizontal line kan dia straight macam gini kan. Ha, so, dia almost mendata. So, bila you buat macam tu. So, bila you draw macam tu. So, bila you ambil satu. This is the first point. This is the second point. Look, put it price. Because price less than demand. Relationship, relationship between price and quantity demand. Right? Okay. So, this is the first point. This is the second point. So, bila harga berubah from this to this. Harga berubah daripada sini ke sini naik sikit saja sebab uh, uh, apa ruang dia kecil saja. But look at what happened to the quantity besar. Compare it, this one is the larger, but this one is smaller. So contoh dia harga naik baru 50 sen, tapi large decrease in quantity demand. Okay, so uh, saya adjust sikit sebab uh, uh, you tak boleh nak nampak kan. Uh, Okay, uh, so saya letak anak panah kat sini. Harga naik daripada sini ke sini. What happen? Quantity demand kita berkurang. Uh, daripada sini ke sini. So, ni kecil, ini besar. Sebab dia asal sini. Sini, point ni. Bila harga naik daripada sini di point dia daripada sini sekali harga naik ke sini duduk kat sini so point dia kat sini uh, so berkurang ke sini because I did not put the figure lah ok so this is for the product yang has lots of substitute in the market uh, barang yang banyak uh, apa pengganti dalam pasaran this happen with good that has many substitute for example soap sabun Shampoo, toothpaste, ubat gigi. Kalau toothpaste ni, kalau kita tengok dalam pasar ada banyak jenama kan. Kita ada Dali, Colgate, Kono Bolayan, kita ada Fresh and White, kita ada uh, apa Halal Gen and so on. So, harga dia basically dekat nak sama. Okay. Uh, sekiranya harga Colgate toothpaste increases, meningkat lah. Harga biasanya RM2. Mostly, ubat gigi. This is the old example eh kita jangan fikir logikal lah saya pakai just a figure naik baru 2 posin daripada RM2 kepada RM2 posin baru 2 posin increase but the quantity demand for Colgate to pay will decrease in a large amount sebab people 
a feeling burden. Uh, ubat gigi Colgate je naik harga. Uh, ubat gigi Fresh and White, ubat gigi Dali semua tak naik harga. Still RM2. RM2 lebih-lebih. Tak, maksudnya tak adalah naik harga macam Colgate. So why should we stick to Colgate? Because we have option now. We can buy either pro, uh, other product. There's lots more uh, apa? brand of toothpaste in the market. So, people will start to decrease the amount of purchase for Colgate toothpaste. Uh, so, barang-barang yang banyak substitute ni, dia kena be careful. Dia tak boleh naik harga tinggi. Uh, sebab dia elastic. Elastic ni maksudnya responsive. The buyer is very sensitive with the change in price. Consumer will find another substitute for Colgate toothpaste. Uh, for example, buying Dali toothpaste as a substitute. Consumer is very responsive to the change in price. That's why naik sikit je, tapi quantity demand decrease in a large amount. Uh, so, to maksud elastic. Okay? And let's go for the second degree. Second degree is inelastic. Uh, kalau you perasan, eh? saya tunjuk kat sini pun you boleh nampak eh? sebab dia tengok biasa. Jadi, very steep jadi flat dia dia macam almost nak jadi tegak dia flat ah uh, okay this is inelastic inelastic tu maksudnya uh, the the buyer the consumer is less sensitive to the change in price sebab kat sini uh, peningkatan harga is larger okay you can see here The increase in price is larger, besar, but the increase in quantity is lesser. Kecil. Uh, maksudnya, peningkatan harga barang tu meningkat, tapi a customer tak beli, ya. Tapi tak ramai orang decided not to buy the product. Uh, the percentage in price is more than the percentage change in quantity demand. Kenapa macam tu? Sebab good ni, dia ada less substitute. Kurang pengganti dalam pasaran. For example, petrol and cigarette. Petrol ni, minyak petrol lah kan? If you tak isi petrol dalam kereta, you bukan boleh isi minyak masak ke minyak rambut ke tak boleh kan? So, nak tak nak, you kena beli. Kalau harga dia mahal setara mana pun, you beli. Ha, so, nampak tak? Dia naik sampai RM2.50. Sebab kita bukan beli 1 liter petrol kan? You beli beli the liter, right? 50 sen increase for 1 liter it's very uh, it's very high tau sangat mahal uh, tapi kita boleh tengok daripada penurunan jumlah pembeli kurang tak banyak walaupun peningkatan harga dia tinggi sebab people don't have choice uh, sebab dia ada less option so apa yang choice yang you ada kalau you tak beli petrol either you carpool kongsi kereta ataupun you apa You naik public transport Or whatsoever uh, The contoh dia lagi adalah Cigarette Cigarette ni uh, lebih kepada addicted So when something They are addicted You are willing to buy Even though the price is expensive For example the government uh, Impose high tax for the cigarette In order to avoid people from consuming Lots of cigarette uh, In order for for uh, uh, apa To control their addiction Uh, to make sure that Malaysian citizen is very healthy government pun letaklah cukai yang tinggi pada cigarette supaya uh, rakyat Malaysia kuranglah merokok kan supaya rakyat Malaysia sihat tapi tak turun pun jualan cigarette still tinggi sebab cigarette ni addicted kalau dia tak merokok dia bukan boleh substitute dengan other things tak boleh uh, so sebagai peniaga tu pak tak nanti kita tahu in the future kan maybe you you become a seller afterwards right if you sell something yang tak ada less substitute in the market you can get more profit if you increase your price because your buyer has no choice if you increase your price in higher price uh, higher price in larger uh, uh, increase still you will lose consumer but tak ramai still you get your profit lah Uh, this is because consumer cannot find substitute for petrol or something for something else hence If the price of uh, of the petrol increases, because we will still buy the product, but in a lesser amount lah. Uh, for example, cigarette tu, daripada merokok sekotak sehari, sekali maybe dia kurangkan, tapi still tak rugi lah. Pendaka rokok tak rugi. Uh, consumer is less responsive to the change in price. Tu maksud inelastic, kurang responsive. Bila harga berubah, walaupun berubah tinggi, tapi quantity demand turun, tapi tak banyak. And 
small cici quantity demand. Jadi, large cici quantity demand. It's very responsive. Jadi, kita sebagai seller, kalau you are sebagai seller nanti, you kena be careful lah. Kalau you jual produk yang banyak substitute the market, untuk elastic, kalau barang-barang you banyak substitute, you tak boleh naikkan harga banyak-banyak. Kalau you tinggikan harga produk you, what happen to you? You will face loss. Sebab consumer you akan pergi beli barang daripada pesaing. But ada substitute. Okay. Next is unitary elastic. So for unitary elastic, uh, this is the diagram. So beza dia, kalau yang ni, yang ni lebih stick. Kalau elastic ni, elastic ni lebih stick. Dia almost nak berdata. Almost nak jadi horizontal line. Okay. Almost nak berdata horizontal line. Okay. Tapi, yang unitary ni, dia lebih, orang kata, uh, balance, 45 degree. So, bila you draw, you dapat semua besar kat sini. Uh, okay. So, the increase in price is the same amount like the decrease in quantity demand. Okay. Harga naik, sama besar. 5% increase in price equals to 5% change in quantity demand. Uh, the demand curve is evenly downward sloping. Semua downward sloping, price, quantity demand. Semua so, kalau you draw, semua downward sloping because it's demand curve, right? Okay. Tapi, jadi kita tak ada contoh barang. Sebab this is only in the theory. Uh, this is a rare case. If the price of the product slightly change, for example, increase by 5%, The quantity demand for the, that good also decreased by 5%. It's only existed in the theory. Tak ada in real life. So don't ask me what type of product is that. We only learn this due to the theory. Okay, very simple. Alright, next. Let's go for perfectly elastic. Tadi kita belajar elastic kan? Ha, ini elastic kan? Elastic tu flat. Ha, almost nak berdata kan? Almost horizontal right? Ha, berdata saya kata oh, horizontal. Okay, macam ni kan? Uh, but for this one, bila dia kata perfectly elastic, dah elastic yang perfect. So, dia akan terus menjadi horizontal line. Uh, okay. So, what happened here? Percentage change in price will result to a percentage change in quantity demand equals to zero. So, sekiranya ada sedikit je perubahan pada harga, tak akan ada seorang pun beli produk tersebut. Ah, so what happened there? If for example the price of the product increases, sikit je. Naik 5 sen. Harga dia asal RM2, naik 5 sen. 5 sen je increase. Nobody will buy the product. Uh, so kenapa tu? Itu adalah extreme case. This is also in the theory. Tak wujud pun dalam real life. So if the price of the product slightly changes, for example, from RM2 to RM205, The quantity demand for that good will become zero. Nobody will buy the product. Because the consumer dislike the increase in the product price. So, tapi tak ada, tak ada lah. Contoh barang tak ada. This is only in the theory. Perfectly elastic. It is an extreme case. Okay. And last one adalah perfectly inelastic. Tadi li, tadi tadi tu perfectly elastic kan. Dia, dia berdata terus kan. Ha, tadi inelastic kita In elastic kita almost tegak kan Saya kata Very uh, steep right uh, So what happened dia Dia akan jadi Steep Kalau jadi perfectly in elastic Dia akan jadi tegak terus uh, Perfectly in elastic Dia akan jadi tegak terus So percentage change in price Equals to zero uh, So maksudnya Perubahan harga yang sangat tinggi here There will be an increase in price. Very high increase. Nampak tu. Perdikat harga yang sangat tinggi. But, the quantity demand for the product is unchanged. Maksudnya, jumlah orang nak beli, the amount is the same. The demand curve is vertical. Jadi, extreme case also. If the product, if the price of the product increases in large amount, for example, agak asalnya RM2, dia meningkat kepada RM10. Bukan sekali ganda lah. Berkali-kali ganda lah ni. The quantity demand for that good will not be affected. Tak akan terkesan pun. 
the consumer will still buy the product even though the price of the product increases. This happened with the product with no substitute. Product yang tiada pengganti. For example, insulin for diabetic patient. Uh, orang yang sakit diabetik, dia kena sentiasa ambil insulin. Kalau tak ambil insulin, dia tak boleh ganti daripada gula ke sebab dia lain komponen dia. So, what company yang menghasilkan insulin di Malaysia? So, insulin dia adalah kawalan. Uh, so, dia monopoli lah. Maksudnya sebab dia menghasilkan, di satu-satu dia company yang menghasilkan insulin. So, orang sakit diabetik, kalau tak beli daripada company tersebut, dia tak boleh dapatkan dekat lain. Uh, so, the amount is the same. Orang yang sakit diabetik tu akan tetap beli. Tak kisahlah harga dia naik berikat berapa, berapa, berapa mahal pun. Quantity demand is unchanged. Only one company produces insulin. So, if the price increases, the patient will still buy the product because it is essential for them. The company is said to have monopoly power. They can secure profit because their product is unique without any substitute. But don't worry lah. For this type of product, government tak akan biar dia jadi monopoly. Why? Kalau tak, Memang dia akan naikkan harga setinggi bukit dan ramai lah yang akan meninggal sebab tak mampu nak beli insulin because it's too expensive. Huh. So hopefully you boleh faham eh. Okay. So here, saya ada buat summary dia. Uh, okay, I'll give it to you, no worries. Nanti saya akan letak dalam nota you future. Uh, this is the summary. First, kita tengok ED kan, dia ada lima kategori. Elastic, inelastic, unitary elastic, perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic. Saya so, start the definition, the responsiveness of the change in quantity demand due to the change in price. And then I put the formula there. Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 times P1, P2 minus P1. So, kalau elastic, dia uh, almost flat. Yang ni, very steep. Yang ni, sama level, sama besar. Okay. Yang ni, uh, horizontal, sorry, vertical. Vertical ke horizontal? Horizontal line, this is a vertical line. Okay. So, the explanation is the same here. Price elasticity coefficient. Uh, yang ni, you kena ingat. Because, yang ni, you nak kena classify ni. Uh, ED bigger than 1, untuk elastic. Ini less than 1 untuk inelastic. Ini equals to 1 untuk unitary elastic. Ini equals to infinity for perfectly elastic. Ini equals to 0 for perfectly inelastic. And then I give the example there. Okay. Alright. So, kita okay, tengok example dia. Alright. The following table below shows the hypothetical demand for good A and good B given and so, be careful lah. So, biasa dia memang dia bagi perangkap lah. Dia bagi dua types of good. So, make sure you take the correct one. Okay? So, price of good A, quantity demand of good A, quantity demand of good B. So, kalau you nak cari price elastic demand, dia mesti barang yang sama. Harga benda yang sama, quantity benda yang sama. Tak boleh ambil good B. Kalau you ambil harga A, good B, dia akan jadi cross. Sekarang ni, kita cari price elastic of demand, ED. So, A dengan A. Uh, okay? So, here dia kata, Calculate the price lesson of river for good A when the price falls from 3 to, uh, sorry, from 5 to 3. Uh, so, 5 to 3. Daripada 5 kepada 3. So, like I told you, yang dia mention mula-mula tu, that 1 will become the P1. And 3 will become P2. Uh, sebab tu saya letak P1, 5, P2, 3. Okay? So, look at the box. Kalau P1, 5, 130 dia akan jadi Q1. Kalau P2, 3. 150 akan jadi Q2. Okay. Alright. So, here. Okay. So, yang lain-lain tu untuk good B dan consumer income tu tak related lah. Sebab yang ni maybe untuk guna untuk question lain. Nah, make sure you ambil information yang betul. Biasa dalam table lah memang dia selalu bagi perangkap lah. So, be careful eh. Okay. So, P1 is 5. P2 is 3. Q1 is 130. Q2 is 150. Because what? This one is P1. This one is Q1. Okay. 130 is Q1. 130 is Q1. Okay. So, then you do the formula. 
q2 minus k1 over k1 p1 uh, uh, over p2 minus p1 and put the figure in the formula so i uh, i reckon you all to list down the list here okay so that you you will uh, minimize the mistake okay uh, and then like i told you kira sebelah sebelah jangan kira sekaligus okay be very very extra careful okay so you will get here 0 0.15 times uh, negative 2.5 okay so you can put ed equals to negative 0 0.38 okay careful careful here so ingat satu je untuk ed dia special jawapan okay awak memang confirm you akan dapat dalam bentuk negatif macam mana you kira pun ed memang negatif sebab apa relationship between price and quantity is the opposite bila harga naik kuantiti akan turun so of course jawapan dia akan jadi negatif so kalau you uh, uh, bila you ambil tinggal jawapan macam ni je you akan dapat semua jadi akan jadi inelastik uh, sebab tu untuk ED sahaja kita akan ignore the negative sign kita akan ambil, ambil dalam bentuk absolute value ED sahaja be careful lah kita ada empat elasticity kan ED, EY, EX, e, 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 S kan untuk yang lain-lain tu kita jangan ignore one chip negative tu jangan kacau tapi untuk ED sahaja sebab jawapan dia one chip negatif you must ignore the negative sign sebab tu saya buat slash 0.38 so this is the answer 0.38 ah, for ED we will only take the absolute value without the negative sign to know the types of elasticity compare the final answer with the coefficient coefficient tu yang mana? coefficient tu yang tadi lah ah, yang ni 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 coefficient ni sebab tu you kena hafal ni apa ni? elastic ni apa? ED lebih besar daripada 1 ke ED lebih kurang daripada 1 ke lebih besar daripada 1 ke ha. sebab setiap like, setiap uh, types of uh, elasticity ni lain dia punya coefficient ni coefficient ni you kena compare ok so kalau macam ni 0.38 0.38 adalah nombor positif right ok nombor positif bila that dia adalah less than 1 right Uh, kurang daripada satu lah kan bukan, eh, sebab 0.38 bukan besar daripada satu dia, dia bukan sama dengan satu dia bukan infinity dia, dia juga bukan sama dengan kosong so di sini lah uh, less than one so bermaksud yang kita kira tadi adalah inelastic uh, bila dah less than one hand say this inelastic ok uh, and sometimes ok dia tak bagi dua dua nilai macam tu yang macam ni kan dia bagi uh, price uh, falls from 5 to 3 lepas tu quantity pun ada dua kan uh, with the everything ada dua so you boleh pakai formula ni sometimes dia tak ada nilai dia tak bagi dua nilai tak ada P1 P2 dia bagi dalam bentuk percentage so kalau dia bagi dalam bentuk percentage this is the formula you should use for ED basically this is the same formula sebab tadi kan definition of ED you get here the responsiveness of the change perubahan quantity demand kepada perubahan harga so formula yang kedua adalah peratus perubahan quantity demand kepada kepada tu maksud bahagi peratus perubahan harga percentage change in quantity demand over percentage change in price so basically it's the same formula Cuma je kita ambil dalam bentuk peratusan. Uh, so, for example, this is the question. A steel bill rises the price of steel by 5%. Harga steel naik 5%. Which result to a 4% reduction. Reduction to decrease lah in the quantity of steel demanded. So, dia tanya, apakah demand curve facing by this firm? Dia nak tahu uh, dia punya apa coefficient tu lah demand curve dia elastic ke inelastic ke unitary ke perfect ke ha. ok for this formula you tak boleh pakai uh, Q2 tolak Q1 sebab you tak ada nilai tu you ada cuma ada dalam bentuk percentage this is the, fir the first information eh? this is the second information you have that tapi you kena be very careful pertama you kena tengok symbol dia rises yang kedua reduction bila dia sebut rise maksudnya tambah Meningkat Reduction 
tolak. Uh, so, 5% rises in price. Price tu kat bawah kan? Uh, so, maksudnya bawah ni tambah 5. Kalau 4% reduction. Uh, quantity demand reduce by 4%. Maksudnya, tol, uh, uh, quantity demand duduk atas. 4% sebab reduction in quantity demand kan? Uh, price naik 5%. Quantity demand reduce 4%. So, atas tolak 4 bahagi tambah 5. Jadilah, tolak 4 tambah 5. So, yang ni kena be careful ni. You tak boleh main letak je 4 bagi 5 macam gitu je. You tak akan dapat the figure. So, you akan dapat negatif 0.8. Like itu tu, every answer for ED akan jadi negatif. Tapi, kita kena ambil dalam bentuk absolute value. Still, 0.8 adalah less than 1. So, dia adalah inelastic. Bawah kategori inelastic. ED will be, will also uh, will take the absolute value so the final answer for ED will be ED less than 1 in elastic demand noted here if it say increase it will be positive 5 if it say decrease it will be negative 5 ok boleh alright so we are done there with ED ok so ala-ala kat situ kita terus tengok the price elasticity of supply sebab degree dia sama uh, ok, let's go for price less of supply ok, so for price less of supply saya terus tunjuk dekat uh, dia punya kategori eh. uh, dia sama macam price less of demand cuma dia, dari segi drawing awak draw supply curve lah supply curve output sloping jadi demand uh, jadi demand, demand downward sloping supply upward sloping so, dia ada lima kategori juga. Elastic, inelastic, unitary elastic, perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic. So, ini adalah summary yang saya buat. Sama macam dalam slide. Okay. Definition dulu. The responsiveness of the change in quantity supply. Sebab kita tengok perubahan harga. The price when the... Due, uh, when, uh, sorry. When the price increases, how will it affect the quantity supply? The responsiveness of the change in quantity supply due to the change in price. So, the formula is the same. Cuma kita kena ingat QD. QD means quantity supply. Okay. So, for elastic. Elastic sama je. Definition macam demand tadi. Bermaksud, harga naik sedikit, quantity supply akan meningkat dengan banyak. Ah, so, it is special dia. Okay. Uh, percentage change in price is less than percentage change in quantity supply. Uh, kenaikan harga sedikit daripada kenaikan uh, quantity supply. Quantity supply akan naik juga banyak. Kenapa bukan turun? Sebab kan law of supply said harga increase, quantity supply increase. So, kita stick dengan law of supply yang kita belajar with chapter 2. Uh, tadi, tadi kan kita cakap yang ni harga uh, untuk demand Harga naik, kuantiti di mana turun kan? Di ke sini. Okay. So, I put a uh, shape lah. Yang ni, harga naik. Tapi, kuantiti di mana turun? The negative relationship. Tapi, untuk supply. Okay. Supply kan, seller suka. Harga naik sebab dia akan dapat buah profit. So, harga naik. Sekejap ya. Okay, the price increases. The quantity supply also increases. Positive relationship. Uh, sama eh. Yes, yang lain pun sama. Okay. Price increase. Quantity supply increase. Okay. Kejap. Saya letak terus. Oh. Sorry. Cannot do that. Because this is an image. So it's okay. I'll put it here. No worry. Same goes here. Increase. With increase.
okay and uh, I'll put it here also increase decrease Okay, so uh, tak apa lah kalau you nampak macam tu sikit sebab I, I'm drawing using the computer so I have a bit of constraint. So nanti kalau you dalam uh, apa for the exam, oh, you tak ada final exam dah kan. Tak apa lah nanti kita tengok balik macam mana because this is very unexpected right. So hopefully faham lah ni dia berhampir kosong maksudnya dia decrease lah kosong dekat sini. Okay, so for supply tadi. Alright, so yang ni naik yang naik. Ha, yang ni bila dia naik sikit je harga seller akan jual dengan banyak sebab dia very responsive seller seller are very responsive ni dekat sini ni ha, seller suka harga naik sikit je uh, seller akan jual dengan banyak barang tersebut kenapa macam tu? sebab barang tu can be easily produced such as manufactured goods chocolate, cakes, pen and etc dia tak memerlukan masa yang lama untuk dihasilkan ha, contohnya saya mahu hasilkan cake kan Oh, kata esok harga kek naik. So, hari ni saya akan hasilkan dengan banyak. So that, I can, uh, I can get profit. Because this product is very easy to be produced. Okay. Well, uh, untuk elastik pula, dia punya ES ni sama. Macam kalau, kalau tadi kan, kalau elastik untuk, ni ED bigger than one kan. Ha, yang ni, ES bigger than one. Sama je. Ha, kalau yang elastik pula, harga naik dengan banyak. Tapi kuantiti supply naik, tapi sikit je. Small changes in quantity supply. Bukan seller tak suka harga naik dengan banyak. Of course, seller suka. Tapi, produk dia ada constraint. Uh, why? Sebab dia kata, good that require time to be produced. Such as, livestock. Livestock tu apa? Uh, haiwan ternakan. Ayam, itik, kambing. Hari ni, you ada anak ayam. Esok harga ayam meningkat. Bukan masa sehari dia boleh uh, jadi dewasa, dia boleh jual terus jadi mak ayam kan? Tak ada. Uh, so, it requires time. You don't have choice. Walaupun harga ayam dekat dengan mendadak, you masih ada anak ayam. Dia memerlukan masa untuk membesar. Same goes with vegetable. Hari ni, sayur you kecil lagi. Tak boleh dituai lagi. Esok naik harga. Bukan you boleh percepatkan proses untuk uh, membesarkan dia. Cannot. So, ada constraint dari segi seller. Okay. Well, for unitary elastic, ni sama level. Price increase by 5%, quantity supply pun akan naik 5%. Jadi pun rare case, dia tak ada example, only in theory. So, ES equals to 1. Sama je macam demand tadi, ED equals to 1. Ha, jadi pun, uh, bila perfectly elastic, jadi kan elastic kan almost berdata, right? Jadi bila perfectly elastic, perfect terus, dia akan horizontal line terus. Okay? Infinity, ES equals to infinity. You tak boleh kira je, sebab tak ada dalam soalan pun. This is in the theory only. Percentage change in price will result to a percentage change in quantity supply equals to zero. Supply curve is horizontal. This is the extreme case. Tak ada example juga barang. Well, for this one, harga meningkat dengan sangat tinggi, very very increase, uh, very high increase in price. Okay. Supposedly, the seller is very happy, right? But, the quantity supply is unchanged. Tak berubah. Sama je. Uh, what happened here? Saya tak nak jual ke? Sebab seller dia constrain here. The good that is limited amount in supply such as diamond. So, you bukan esok harga diamond naik harga sampai sekali ganda. You bukan boleh pergi cari diamond sepak-sepak jumpa. Tak ada kan? It's very hard to obtain. You akan jual apa yang ada je lah. Uh, so, this is impossible goods yang impossible to get. Because it is very limited. So, even though the price of the product increase in a large amount, quantity to be sold is the same. Uh, so, hopefully you faham eh. So, for this one, dia tak ada kaitan pun dengan uh, negative sign. 
Uh, so kita tengok example lah. Eh. Uh, for example, eh, this is the calculation. Uh, for example, uh, if the price of shoe increases from 20 to 30 ringgit, quantity supply increase from 40 to 50 unit. So kita ada dua kan. P1, jadi sebut mula-mula P1, ini adalah P2, okay, P1, P2, and quantity supply Q1 and Q2, 40 and 50. Calculate the price less this of supply. So, this is your formula. Sama je macam demand. You can ingat tapi this one is quantity supply. Yang demand tadi, quantity Q ni adalah quantity demand. Okay. 50 minus 40 over 40. Put 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 the figure there. Okay. And then kira sebelah sebelah. 0 0.25 times 2. Kan dapat 0 0.5. So, dia supply ni you tak akan dapat nilai negatif. Sebab relationship dia. P increase, quantity supply increase. So, relationship dia sentiasa positif. So, jawapan dia confirm akan sentiasa positif. So, you dapat 0 0.5. So, you compare here. Supply curve 0 0.5 with that. Bigger than, less than 1, right? Ha, kurang daripada 1. So, dia adalah bawah kategori inelastic. Kebetulan, semua dia inelastic. Tak seperti dia dalam exam. Kadang-kadang semua dia jadi inelastic. Ha, tapi, mostly dia bawah dua kategori lah. Elastic dan juga inelastic sahaja. Jadi, jarang lah. Uh, okay Right, so kita akan uh, Classifikan untuk this question Kategori apa? Inelastic supply Okay, same goes with demand lah Kadang-kadang tu Dia tak bagi Oh, I did not give it here Dia tak bagi Dua, dua, dua P1, P2 uh, So, kalau dia tak bagi P1, P2 Apa yang you perlu buat adalah You pakai formula ni Presentation she got it Segitiga ni maksud change percentage change quantity supply bahagi percentage change price sama je macam tadi tu cuma kita kena make sure kalau dia kata increase kita tambah kalau dia kata decrease kita kena tolak ha, jadi ia ni pakai formula sama je cuma kita tukar kat sini jadi quantity supply jadi kan yang kat demand tu kita percentage change sorry it's not here Here kan uh, Percentage change in quantity Demand kan uh, Percentage change in price Nampak tak uh, So yang Yang ni Formula dia sama juga Percentage change in Because we are talking about The supply It will be Percentage change in quantity Supply Bawah ni price Sebab ni price With quantity Supply Okay Hopefully you faham eh Okay So we stop here And try to do the exercise We have numerous exercise you can ask in the group WhatsApp. Thank you.